All right, guys, today is tow rig mod day. You know what that means? It's probably gonna rain because it's already thunder and the clouds are looking dark. Probably gonna rain any minute because we're gonna be working on the truck, which means we're working outside. This just seems to be kind of the theme here. But anyway, uh, we got a bunch of stuff to do to the truck, got a bunch of cool mods to do to it that I'm really, really excited about. So we're gonna get started on it. Let me uh, fire up, pull her out in front of the shop, and I'll tell you guys kind of what, what the game plan is. Gotta go get my keys. Okay, so I'm gonna see. I think best idea would be to just back up. I guess this is gonna be kind of hard to do with uh, one hand, but probably just gonna back up down the driveway and then loop around. Cause I'm gonna pull up this way so that the truck is at the shop door. It's always kind of tricky to get a truck ready to work on it with the trailer hooked up, but I don't want to unhook the trailer because we're gonna do some mods, register the truck, and then I want to go test drive it again with the trailer with the truck registered. So I don't want to go through the trouble to unhook it. Just hook it back up in a day. So anyway, we're gonna warm up a little bit before we rip her through the yard. Going up the hill to the back there is, you know, you gotta work it a little bit. So let the old girl get up to speed first. <laughs> no. What? No. <laughs> no. All right, guys, we got the 7.3 pulled over here. So basically here's the plan. This is gonna be like phase one of like the first two phases of mods for this thing. So phase one, we're trying to get all this stuff done before our Orlando trip this weekend. So we got a trip there, it's an hour and a half each way. Uh, there's a couple big hills on the way through Claremont, like big enough to really test and see how the truck performs up hills, wind loaded down with the trailer, all that stuff. So that's gonna be kind of like our shakedown test. And then we got a bunch more stuff coming this weekend slash later, uh, you know, early next week that we're gonna put on a bunch of other cool stuff and that we need to get done before Texas, which will be next weekend. So that Texas trip will really be kind of our determining factor. You know, it's a really, really long trip. It's like 18, 20 hours each way. So that'll really tell us if the truck is gonna be good for that kind of trip, if it's miserable. I'm obviously really hoping to keep the truck. I don't have really intend on getting rid of it, but you know, you never know what's gonna happen. That trip may be horrible. It may, you know, the truck may not be able to go fast up hills or what, whatever, I don't, I don't really know. But basically that, that's gonna be our real test. And once we get past that, you know, if all goes well, then we got a bunch more stuff planned. But phase one and phase two is what we're starting with. So we're starting with phase one. So today, I have a bunch of cool stuff. We got some stuff coming also today, but for right now, we're gonna get started on what we have. So we have LED headlights, LED interior lights. We got nice newer tow mirrors, which I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, we got a few other things, we got a tuner coming, uh, a bunch of other stuff. So really exciting mods for phase one, some stuff that should really, really change the truck up a lot and uh, make it a lot better. I'm also gonna make a boost leak tester and test that, even though I got couplers coming, but we'll get there when we get there. First off. Tow mirror, definitely a much needed upgrade. This thing has stock mirrors. So these are basically the uh, 11 to 16 tow mirrors. And I bought these on Amazon. I'll link to them below, but they came with an adapter harness, uh, presumably to our truck. It says they're for the like, you know, 90, 99 to 03. So hopefully this is actually for our truck because this is like obviously a much newer plug for the newer trucks. So. They look decent. I mean, they're like 140 bucks or something with a coupon. They got integrated turn signals, which we'll have to add in later. But for now, we're just gonna get them on get them working, see how they are. So let's get started. Oh, and then also LED. So I bought a bunch of LED interior lights for like everything, dome light, glove box, all that stuff. And then I also got some headlights. I guess tow mirrors first. That's gonna be the most exciting thing. No, LEDs first. Headlights first, headlights first. I'll save the best for, for next. I don't know. Well, we're not off to a great start. The headlights do not fit. It said, because these are this is a 6.0 front end, so these would be headlights for a 6.0. So I checked for those and 7.3, and they're both the 9007 part number, but these are like, I guess they're sealed beam. So you can kind of see in there, it's like the, it's like a interior light style bulb. bulb. So just kind of disappointing because these looked like they were going to be really bright. And I was excited to see how bright they were. But anyway, uh, I guess we'll move on to the tow mirror. So like I said, we can do, the interior lights last, because if it starts raining, we can just hide in the truck and do them. So let's start by getting the old mirrors off. All right, we got the passenger side mirror on, uh, but the this one wasn't hooked up to begin with. The plug just came out, there's nothing hooked to it. And the a little, this adapter harness, this part doesn't fit through the opening. So we got to pull the door panel off to hook it up. So that's kind of lame. Otherwise, this would have been the easiest thing ever. You would have just, Pull these little plugs, four bolts, disconnect the connector, swap it, done. Super easy. So now I gotta figure out how to pull this door panel off. I am not 100% sure, but we will figure it out. Can't be too complicated. Alrighty, one thing I will give this truck so far, oh, I really don't know if I should say it, but easy to work on. I gotta give credit, this is well, Ford credit, this is well designed. There's two bolts and it has these little 
tabs that go in so basically it just slides down and then the two bolts keep it from going up but all those tabs keep it from coming out way better than like the pop clip style i'm used to so anyway pulling it out wasn't hard we pulled the speaker out and then we got to there's our um our connector for the mirror and then here is our adapter and our other connector so we're going to connect it hope it works i'm going to go ahead and kind of zip tie this harness out of the way of the window Oh, I feel raindrops. Not good. Trying to hustle. Now we're nice and out of the way. I think the window probably hit it and unplugged it before, which is why it wasn't working before. All right, let's see. Dion. I guess we need to shut the door. There we go. She's a ripper. Get her all set up for us. And we'll just push that bottom uh, blind spot mirror out. These look really nice. They're very, very large and lots of, lots of surface area. See where you, what you got going on. Okay, let's install this one. All right, tow mirrors are on. I, uh, it's kind of funny. I kind of like the way the small ones look for whatever reason. They looked kind of goofy, but they looked kind of sleek. But seeing these on here, Definitely looks meaner, more aggressive, and I think it, it suits it better. I mean, not that I really did them for looks, it's like a 100% a function thing. Having the nice big blind spot mirror and a nice big mirror is amazing. They do slide out, obviously the toe mirrors, but I probably won't honestly ever have to. Just sitting in here once I was setting up the mirrors, like I can see plenty like this. The Dodge ones even folded out. I mean, pretty much any tow mirror even folded out, you still can't really see around the trailer. It's just what it is with an enclosed trailer. So anyway, they look nice. They fit nice. They're pretty easy to install. I definitely like them. I'll give you guys a little before and after so you can see what they looked like before. So here's the before. And after. I don't remember what angles I gave you of the before, but let's give you a couple angled angles. Definitely a long-term plan would be to paint match them and then do the same generation 11 to 16 rear bumper and uh, paint match because it has like a big rubber section and then paint match the metal part. So that would definitely be goals down the road. But again, working on phase one, phase two and testing first before we get into any of the other crazy mods like LED tails and stuff that I want to do. So moving on, we're going to go get the stuff for a boost leak tester. But first, I want to get these LEDs in. I wish it was night so I could show you guys how dim the this one is, but the back ones aren't working, so I'm assuming the bulbs are burnt out. This one's super dim, so we're gonna replace everything. I think I have bulbs that'll fit here too. So we're gonna replace any any bulb that we have an LED for, we're gonna replace. LED all the things. <laughs> Trying not to burn myself. Going to the lows. I guess I can go with you. I need to get stuff for a boost leak tester. All right, we have our stuff for our boost leak tester. We have the three inch coupler. I probably have one of these lying around, but it was like $5. And then we've got this three inch deal with a cap. We're gonna screw, drill a hole in and bolt a valve stem in so that we can use an air chuck and pressurize it and have the, the pressure reading uh, much more easily than using an air chuck and a regulator. Because the other way to do it is basically you put like an air chuck fitting and then you either turn your compressor way down or put a regulator in line and then turn it that way down, but that's a lot more parts. So for me, I think this is the easiest way to go. So I'm gonna drill my hole, put the stem in, and we're gonna boost leak test it before it starts raining, because it looks like it's about to start raining. It was drizzling on our way over here. The sky is dark. It is uh, definitely rainy looking. So I'm gonna finish installing the interior lights, but we're gonna do this first, because this is uh, more time sensitive with the old Florida weather, so. Yeah, anyway, let's get to it. All right, we got our boost leak tester assembled. Very easy, obviously, drill a hole, bolt the valve stem in. So now we need to take the intake off the truck here. We need to take the intake elbow off down there, put this on, then we'll pressurize the system and see what we come up with. I came inside for two seconds and it's monsooning outside. It's always so hard to tell on camera. You can kind of see it whipping off the top of the trailer. At least we got the freaking trailer hatch now. Inside of the trailer won't get wet. Uh, but it's still uh, pouring down rain. So I uh, guess it's time to make some lunch. Ooh. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. Got the LEDs in. You can see. Pachow, pachow. And these, it's like the center one is the door light. 
and then you can turn these side ones on if you want extra brightness. So I'm real curious to see these at night. They should be solid. Got them in the doors too. You can't really tell because that's like red, but should be brighter. Like I said, I'll have to show you guys once it turns nighttime what it looks like. I wonder if these are 194s. I might pop one of these covers off and if these, because I have a bunch of 194s right now and just swap these to LED, we'll see. Pop this cover off. Before I put the rest of these in, let me show you guys the difference. Left, LED, right, not LED. Look at how much freaking brighter that is, it's crazy. I almost don't know if I like it because it kind of changes the whole color of the thing. Changed my mind and put the old style uh, like incandescent whatever back in just because it turns them from like orange to yellow with the LED. So I think I think it looks better that way. Okay, boost leak test. We can hook, hopefully hook our tester up and see where our leaks are. My guess is here. There's definitely like a slit there and a slit on that one. It doesn't seem like they go all the way through. Um, but yeah, I'm really hoping that it is the couplers because we do have couplers on the way from Mishimoto. I don't have anything else that could be a boost leak on the way. So. You know, instead of just throwing the couplers on and hoping it's fixed, we're gonna at least check and see if there's anything else that needs to be resolved so we can, you know, get on top of it, get it ordered or whatever. So, let's get to work. All right, well, our coupler is not gonna work because it is too big and it's not quite the right angle. So we just took apart the intake, clamped our boost leak tester into it, and we gotta cap this hole, cap this hole, and then we can do our boost leak testing. Wish me luck. All right, well, bad news. It is the thing I was really hoping it wasn't. Uh, so I was really hoping it was just a coupler or something and that, that it would be a really easy fix, but you guys know my life and my life with diesel trucks in particular, uh, I don't have that kind of luck usually. So uh, what it is, is the intake plenum gasket, which bolts like right down here. It's like a stamped steel piece. And then like the intake, uh, those two orange couplers down there, they go into it anyway. Supposedly they're really hard to get off because they're RTV'd on, so they're kind of like an oil pan. That's RTV'd on where they just kind of like glued on there and usually you end up tearing them up trying to get them off. So, I mean, regardless, we got to fix it. It is like, oh, let me see if I can show you. Just so you guys can get a visual representation of how bad it is. So the way to do this is you just spray some soapy water on your potential leaks. And then we have our compressed air. Get white for you. You see all those bubbles? So that is most certainly where our leak is. So anyway, I don't want to get leave the truck, like take, start taking the truck apart and then the trailer's stranded here. So I'm going to go park, like unhook the trailer. No, we got to get it done. Once it's fixed, once the boost leak is fixed, I know the truck will run and drive a lot better. So, I mean, I'm motivated to do it because of that. So I, I can't complain. I just... I was really like fingers crossed that it wasn't the freaking plenum gaskets and of course it's only the plenum gaskets. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Let's get this stuff unhitched and bring the truck back over and start tearing into her. We got parts on the bench. It's a good sign. We got this thing pretty stripped down already. Um, I still need to pull this turbo out and I need, I think I need to pull this uh, fuel filter housing out, but I'm not hundred percent sure. I don't really want to because I don't really know how it comes out, but we got the harness out of the way. Like I said, we got the turbo ready to come out. We just got to undo the down pipes, undo the two bolts, I think, that hold it onto the pedestal. I think that's it. We can pull that out, and uh, yeah, we're almost there. Alrighty, well, we got the fuel filter housing off. One thing I got to say, God, I shouldn't say these things while I'm mid-project, but like, you know, all the fuel, uh, the hard fuel lines, like they, they weren't crazy over-tightened, like, I don't know, everything just kind of made sense. The way it, it bolted and unbolted and, and the tightness levels of it. And and I don't know, everything just came off. It wasn't like, you know, this hard line's in a bind as you try to take it off and then it kits this thing. Like, I don't, it, it seems like pretty well thought out. Like it looks like it might be complicated when you're looking at it from the outside. But when you actually get in here and start working on it, it's really not that bad. Really not that bad. So the last thing we had to do is take the turbo off. I am going to wait on that. I need to call the Ford dealer tomorrow and get, uh, see if they have the RCV that I need to reseal the plenum gaskets and the O-rings for the pedestal, for the turbo pedestal. So while we're in there, we'll just replace all that stuff. But yeah, uh, I'm just going to save it for tomorrow so I don't have like open oil galleys because I'm not going to be able to get the plenums off tonight anyway. It's already getting dark, like I said. So we're going to call the night, go shower, chill, and then we'll, we'll get back to it in the morning. We'll hit it hard 
Uh, one thing I will say, I said this before too. Um, one nice thing about this truck is I really, really like the truck. Like I like pretty much everything about it. There's some things that I want to fix and kinks I want to work out, boost leak being one of them. But like as a whole, I look at it and I'm like, dang, like that looks about perfect. Like there's a few little things, but like, oh, I really like the way that looks. And that makes it for me way easier to work on. When I was working on the Dodge, it was like, the Dodge is just a tool to tow my trailer. I didn't really care that much for the truck. It was rusty, it was beat up. It, it just wasn't a very nice truck. And, uh, you know, so just like, I don't know, working on it was so hard because I was like, oh God, I gotta work on this thing again. Like, I just want it to work, like whatever. Whereas this thing is like, I don't know, it's kind of like a project truck. It's, it, it, I, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm not making a whole lot of sense, but I think you guys get what I'm saying. I really like the truck, so it makes it a lot easier uh, to put time and money into it because, you know, the end result of the truck that it is, I like a lot. So anyway, I'm gonna go clean up, dirty, greasy, you know, 20 something years of grime all over me. So see you guys in the morning. Alrighty, so before we get started today, we're gonna go ahead and head to the dealer and pick up the stuff we need. They don't have all of the pedestal O-rings that I need. They do have some like kit with bolts and stuff that's like a hundred dollars. I don't really know that I want to buy that, um, but I told, I told them how to look at it. I just want to see what it comes with because I do need another O-ring that goes like on the turbo outlet. The one that's on there is torn and they someone had RTV'd it and stuff. So I do need that anyway. So if it does come with that, I might just suck it up and buy it. But anyway, we're going there to get the, the Ford Motorcraft uh, sealant. So it's it's designed specifically for the 7.3, specifically for boost applications. Um, it's like 20 bucks, so it's the same price as like a right stuff tube. And I mean, it's worth it to not have to do this again because it didn't seal right with like normal RTV. So anyway, uh, get to uh, the old dealership, this dealership and uh, pick up our stuff. We got our stuff. So this is our gasket sealant, our Motocraft. I think it's TA31. It's the part number. And then we got this gasket kit for the turbo. It comes with new bolts, but it does look like it has the compressor housing O-ring. Uh, it was like I said, it was freaking ninety dollars. But I need it. I can't wait on it. They didn't have just the pedestal O-rings. Um, it's not worth having the truck apart for a week to wait for them to come in like online. It's just not worth it. So anyway, I love this little. Safiro is a runabout car. It's such a good uh, like grocery getter. It's just fun to drive, but has AC and all like the, the creature comforts that you'd want. So I don't know, I enjoy it. Anyway, let's get back to the house. Let's get back to work. And hopefully before it rains, because it looks like it's gonna rain again today. Like it always does. Alrighty, well, it is rather oh, sunny right now. But when I say rather, I mean very sunny. Very bright. <laughs> um, definitely prefer this to it raining, but man, it is toasty. I've only been out here for like 30 seconds and it's hot. Alrighty, well, it's so humid. I had to take my glasses off because I just couldn't see anything because they just got covered in sweat. I'm covered in sweat. Um, so yeah, I got the turbo off. It wasn't terrible. It's just, if you've ever taken V-bands off, they kind of get stuck. And if you just get a screwdriver on that whip there, pop it, usually pops right off. But sometimes you have to do it on all three sections. So I couldn't, it took me forever to get to that bottom one. I took the nut completely out and then when I popped it, the bolt fell out and it is somewhere. So I'm gonna have to track that down or steal a bolt from another V-band if it works or whatever. But turbo's out, pedestal's out, pedestal was a little tricky. Uh, but other than that, it's all out. And start unbolting our, these things, splenums. And hope that they aren't super, super, super tight on there and we can pop, pop them off without killing ourselves. But that's the last step, getting them off. So I wouldn't say this is a horrible project, but Definitely not super fun either. Just the turbo and pedestal were probably the worst part, honestly. Ugh, and just the sweat. Freaking Florida, man. I'm just like drenched. Success! The plenums are off. Really wasn't that bad getting them out. They did get a little bent up here and there. I was barely prying on them, but they're just such thin, like stamped steel. But we didn't really pry anywhere where there's not a bolt, so we'll just try to get them as flat as possible. We gotta clean the RTV off these. They gotta clean the RTV off the engine itself, but you can see where the plenums would go. So we got those off. Definitely, someone definitely was in here before and did this because one, there was an odd sized bolt. There's a 10 mil head. The bolt down here that's really hard to get to was cut and shortened. I can show you that one. This guy. I don't know why they took it out because the that space, that plenum is, uh, it's slotted. So you can just slide it out, but I'm assuming they didn't realize that and they cut the bolt and then they put it back in shorter because they got it out. I, I, 
I don't know. Don't ask me. Um, one of these bolts, it's in here somewhere. One of them is the wrong bolt. It's longer. And I guess people say you can mix up uh, valve cover bolts and these bolts and the valve cover bolts are like three threads longer and they go down and you think they're tight, but they don't actually seat the, the point them all the way. So I think there's a very strong likelihood that that, because that was like right where our leak was. So anyway, it seems like whoever did this before, it definitely wasn't the guy I bought the truck from. The, I think the person that owned it before that did the wheels and stuff, um, I th it feels like, I feel like they had it done. Anyway, whoever did it didn't do a very, very good job. Hopefully we can do a better job. So we gotta get to cleaning, get to flattening, flatten this thing out and uh, try to get them straight. They're only supposed to be 18 foot pounds. And I mean, it took my big impact like going hard to get them off. So uh, whoever did this did a terrible job. Got the pointums cleaned up. All right, for this kind of stuff, like if it's anything that uses RTV, it's okay to have some scratches in it. So I just hit it with a wire wheel on a drill and get it cleaned up. And I brake cleaned it out to get all the little pieces out brake clean the outside and then this was a little bit trickier uh trying to get this clean just with these hoses still in there but we got it pretty clean we got a couple little more spots but we brake cleaned it and cleaned it all off nice so i think we're about ready to throw them back on so i had to do a little more running around let me show you the difference in bolts here so this is the bolt that it's supposed to have this is a longer bolt and what happens is this bolt bottoms out before it gets tight and that was right about where our leak was. So I would definitely say that was con a contributing factor. And this one's the right length, but it's a 10 mil head. So I went and bought, where did I put them? Oh, they're right here. I went and bought, I found the exact same bolt, same head, same flange, same length, same thread. So bought a few of those. So we have all the correct bolts, not this jankiness. And then I had bought, uh, what, what was the partner? TA, I think I bought TA31 and I need TA30. So TA30 is the Motorcraft uh, sealant that is specifically for the intake plenum itself because there's the other ones are meant for like the oil pan and all that stuff. So this one is meant to seal against like high boost pressure. So I figured I spent the money on the Motorcraft brand, like the proper one, I might as well go get the right one uh, so I don't have any issues. So yeah, now it's moment of truth, gotta put them on. I'm just like a little nervous, RTV and stuff's always like, you never know if you're, if you got it quite right. So. What I normally do is I put a bead on and then I flatten it out myself and make sure it's kind of like the right thickness and then I put it on. A lot of, some people will just put a thick bead on and then let it squish, but I don't know. My, my method is that and then, and I'll snug it down to where everything is like kind of contacting, let it sit for like 15 minutes, let it cure a little bit and then torque it down. So anyway, that's my game plan. Let's get to it. Alrighty, I was mistaken. We're actually gonna let it sit cure for an hour. So we finger tightened everything. As you can see, the plenums are back on. Like I said, they're just finger tight. Oh, I need to put a rag in there. Hold on. Before I forget. But yeah, they're just finger tight. They're just like ran down till it kind of squeezed out all even. And then, uh, like I said, we're going to let it sit so that it develops like a solid layer and then we'll torque it down. A lot of people just go straight to tightening it down. If the RTV is still super wet, it's just going to squish right out. So Anyway, we're gonna let that sit for a bit. We're gonna torque it down, it's 18 foot pounds, I believe, and then reassemble everything else. Why, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and change my uh, oil pedestal O-rings. So there's two in the block right there we need to swap, and then there's two in the pedestal itself. So basically, how this works is, this goes to the block, that's where those O-rings are. So that returns the oil. This is where the turbo bolts do. So it returns into here and then goes through here and then down into the block. Kind of a crazy system, but you know, gives you a place to bolt the turbo. So anyway, I think these were changed recently because it does have a wicked wheel in it. Um, but we're gonna change them anyway, just to be safe. All right, well, it rained, but it was a short rain. <laughs> we let these things dry for about an hour. So it's time to start the reassembly process. Let's hope I didn't mess anything up. I did one of them, I feel like I accidentally tightened it all the way down and maybe some of the RTV squeezed out. The RTVing stuff always makes me anxious. I don't know why, it's just one of those things where I always feel like it's gonna, it's gonna mess up. So, I mean, if it doesn't work this time, I'm gonna do, they, they make billet ones uh, and it's an O-ring seal. So you don't have to freaking worry about the RTV. So if so, I'm gonna do that. Also, the tuner showed up. 
Uh, but I don't know that we're gonna have time to do that today. If anything, we'll do it tomorrow. But anyway, wish me luck. Hopefully it all goes back together smooth. Alrighty, reassembly. So this part made me feel a little bit better as we were torquing them down. They all took at least a couple turns to get tight. I was worried that I had gone more than hand tight on a couple of them, but they were all, you know, basically hand tight. So we torqued them all down to spec. There's three that you have to get to with a wrench that we couldn't torque down to spec, but we got them done anyway. Uh, we get getting the turbo in really, really tricky. You're, it's very heavy. It's back there. It's kind of a, a tight squeeze, and then you're trying to get the V band the feed v-band onto it while getting it on the pedestal without knocking the o-rings off but we managed to get it done we got it tightened down uh we fought a little bit with this exhaust housing portion it it just the uh, v-band was kind of stuck so i was fighting trying to get the nut off of it to hook it back up and i figured out how to do it and and got it hooked up but it was a little bit of a struggle but we got it done so it doesn't matter uh, moving on, next thing is the fuel filter housing. So this, you basically just start the bolts and like make sure the bolts that mount it are kind of on there but not tight, and then you start putting the fuel lines on, which they're a little tricky. They're kind of like brake lines where it's easy to get them to start cross-threading, and you have to have them perfect to get them threaded on right. So a couple of them were tricky and didn't want to get started uh, straight, but we got them all to start straight. Once you get them to start straight, then you just tighten the, the filter housing down all the way and then tighten them down the rest of the way, and that's pretty much it. Um, I mean, really not bad that the spacing and everything where they are, you can easily get a wrench on both. It's not like one's blocking the other or anything weird like that. I got to give international credit. Like this, is, like I said, it, it was just it seemed very well thought out as far as when it comes to working on it and taking it apart. So now uh, we've got the wiring in. I went ahead and connected some of that stuff. And then we need to put the intake spider thing on and all the intercooler couplers and, and pipes and all that stuff back on. So I fight a little bit with the turbo one because the O-ring is kind of torn and I had to use some RTV to keep it on there while I mounted everything up. Uh, but yeah, really not bad at all. Now we're just like running hoses and lines and putting the last intercooler pipe in. And once we get this bolted up, we're, I mean, we're done. All right, well, the old 7.3 is back together, uh, I think. I don't think I forgot anything. I hope I didn't forget anything. So we do have to let it cure for 24 hours. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you guys the startup and testing today, but tomorrow we got a tuner in. So we're gonna install the tuner tomorrow while it's finishing curing. And then we'll go test drive with the new tuner and hopefully the boost leak fixed. I did notice this coupler is like pretty freaking shredded. So we're probably still gonna have some boost leaks, but we can test it again once we drive it. And if there are still leaks, see if it's still from the manifolds or the plenums or if it's from the boots. We're gonna be changing the intercooler couplers anyway. Um, I just don't have them right now, so I just put it back together without them. But anyway, regardless, uh, really happy to have it back together. Like I said, at least this was kind of like a learning experience, you know? Like I learned a lot about the truck and how it operates and how everything works and where everything goes. And I think if I have any problems down the road, I'll have a much better idea of what it could be. You know, oh, this connector is worn out going to that thing that is triggering a code or whatever. You know, I, I just think, I think, it was a good learning experience to kind of get get a feel for the truck and, and what it's like to work on it so and it really wasn't bad at all i mean it was a lot of stuff but like it just really was never bad at any point you know i think a lot of that's just because i like the truck so much and i got some big plans for this thing assuming the texas trip goes well so i'm really really exciting stuff on all fronts so anyway uh, i guess that's going to be it for this video again not the video i intended on making but hey you know gotta do what you gotta do sometimes so i'll see you guys tomorrow tuner testing hopefully no boost leak should be way faster see you then goodbye i can't slap the camera because my hands are so dirty like comment and subscribe if you like the videos and stuff okay goodbye see you later